96 caps for the U.S. men's national team, played in Italy, played in MLS, uh, mm -hmm. knows this region uh, very, very well. Alexi Lawless joining us here on Tim and Sid. Alexi, how are things? How's the family? How are you holding up? Uh, gentlemen, you know, we're, uh, we're muddling through down here in uh, the U.S., and I'm here in Los Angeles, so I'm, you know, the uh, uh, interesting times and yeah. uh, hopefully uh, better times ahead. But, uh, you know, just like everybody else, we're trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm a whole lot better uh, in a much better position than a lot of other people. Um, but, you know, still it's, uh, I mean, 2020 has been a hell of a year, guys. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we were, we were just hoping that, uh, that June 1st may help us turn some sort of clock on what has been a terrible, I don't know, five months here. So let's uh, let's hope that June 1st helps us move something along. Hey, we, were, we were talking a little soccer, and we, we both are big fans of, uh, both domestic leagues, or I guess we'll call that domestic, the MLS, even though we're in Canada and you're in the United States of America, we understand it. And we're huge fans of, of overseas leagues. Is the MLS in a danger zone right now with this talk of a lockout in the next little while? Uh, I mean, look, this is, this is obviously unprecedented times. Uh, okay. I think Major League Soccer is, is positioned for you know, an opportunity, but let's, let's be honest. Major league soccer is, is a, is a like to have, it's not a need to have. And they're, they're, they're the promise of the next 25 years, as proud as we are of what's happened over this last 25 years is something uh, that is not promised to anybody. And so, you know, I think that these, these are, these are very delicate and sensitive times for, uh, for everybody. And when it comes to sport, obviously live sport, um, it's even in the best of situations when you're talking about professional soccer in North America, it's a, it's a risky proposition. You know, having said that, I, I do think that what's happened over the 25 years when it comes to major league soccer, when it comes to soccer, whether it's, uh, in the United States, whether it's in Canada, um, does bode well for the future, but you got to get through this and there's still going to be pain. Uh, but I do believe we'll come out on the other side and there will be soccer and soccer will be part of whatever new normal it is. Alexei Lalas, host of the State of the Union podcast, and a man who represented his country 96 times here on Tim and Sid. Alexei, before we get back, 96 appearances for America. Are you pissed you didn't get to 100? Because you deserve to get to 100. If I were you, I'd be pissed I didn't get to 100. Uh, only, you know, out of, you, you, I think you get a watch or something, a really nice watch. So uh, oh. I, I'm still able to tell time, uh, but I don't have that watch. It's, a, it's all right. Listen, the moment you step on the field, doesn't matter what country you're representing, to, to be able to do something like that, it's a tremendous honor. And uh, I love every single time. I'm, I'm turning 50 today, guys. So I've been Oh, around. hey, hold on Look here. This. Wait a yeah. second. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hold on here. Yeah. Look at this. Never mind 100 caps. 50 is the number we need to focus on today. 50. Holy crap. Um, uh, I can't believe it. I don't feel 50. Uh, I, 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 I like to think that I look at least 49 and a half, but, you know, <laughs> it, I've seen a lot. And I've had a wonderful time and, um, you know, the, uh, the opportunity to represent your nation for anybody. I tell you what, even if I was at a stadium right now at the, at the ripe old age of 50, and uh, in our case it would be Greg Berhalter turning around and saying, uh, the coach of the U S men's national team, you got 20 in you. I would be running down there. Uh, it would be no problem. It would be an honor and a pleasure to be able to do something like that. It'll never happen, but I, you know, hope, hope springs eternal. Uh, as, as a great tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as two guys, Alexi, who, who, uh, lived through USA 94 and remember every moment. I think mm -hmm. this is a time for you to grow the beard back. I think this is your moment. We're like, we're in a pandemic. Funny you should say a that. Magic number. Funny what do you, you say? say that. Yeah. So I have been growing the beard and now, uh, you know, for my 50th birthday, I'm contemplating going into the uh, bathroom here and just kind of shaving it. I have not had the goatee that, uh, many people may remember me from, or if you weren't around back in the 1900s, back in the previous century, when I was running around, I had a really long uh, red goatee. I've not had that for gosh, over 20 years now. So maybe I'll just one day over uh, only kind of shave it in and reminisce with a little a bit of nostalgia as i turn uh, as i turn 50 years old we'll see it'll go viral it'll go viral hey um did you realize that you started a great conversation up here in canada when you said that alfonso davies was the best player in Concacaf? i didn't realize that i didn't realize i was being uh, any more provocative than than i am in normal uh, circumstances but yeah everyone came out of the woodwork and it was it was really interesting to see the reaction uh, and and to be fair it, it was balanced. I think a lot of people 
either hadn't contemplated it uh, or when they were finally faced with the realization that this was happened, either because of you know somebody else that they liked or something like that, uh, while they might have screamed and yelled and whined a little bit, I think everybody, when they really came down to it, in the moment, right now, it's not that there's not great CONCACAF players out there, and it's not that there's not great left backs out there, but right in the moment, despite his age, despite his inexperience, despite the fact that he's playing it much more like a left-sided midfielder slash forward, despite the fact that playing for Bayern Munich enables him to do what he's doing, I think you're hard-pressed to find anybody right now that is better. And, that, and so I think it's an absolutely legitimate and fair argument to, uh, to make. But it is an argument, and it is, it is a debate, but I think it just shows you what a wonderful talent he is and how proud everybody should be. And right now, he is not a great Canadian player. He is just a great player in the world, that happens to be Canadian. Alexi Lawless, the birthday boy here on Tim and Sid. Uh, Tim, Tim, forgive me. I'm going to go down a road. I've gone, uh, I've gone down a couple times here when talking about Alfonso Davies, so I want to, I want to pitch it to Alexi Lawless. Um, you mentioned the Canadian national team. Would you play him in that position for the Canadian national team, or would you just completely take the reins off and let him be an attacking player? No, I mean, I think you play him, uh, <laughs> it's Canada. And with, and with all due respect, it's certainly not Bayern Munich. And Canada does not have that type of uh, game changer when it comes to attack. I mean, look, even though he's, ping, he's playing that left-hand side. Now, I, I might look at it playing him on a left-hand side, but in a much more advanced uh, position. Right. But, you know, when, when Canada plays, they're not going to play like Bayern Munich. And they're not right. going to be playing the, the you know, the, they're not one of the haves as opposed to the have-nots, they're not one of these super clubs that 70% of the time they step on the field, they know they've already won the game because they've, they've gone out there and gotten that type of talent. So it's a very, very different type of situation. I think, I think he, from a U.S. perspective, I am, I am more scared of a Canada with Alfonso Davies in an attacking advanced position, even though he does, he's not playing that day-to-day, than I am a Canada that plays him at that left-back position because I think his... His ability to impact the game playing for Canada in that left back, and I'm using that in quotes, left back position, even if he tries to go forward, is much more limited. So I can deal with that in a much better way and for a much more extended period of time than I can when he's up top. The beauty of this is that he's 19 years old. But if you were to, if I were to press you on the guy that you think if it's not if, if he's the best right now, who was who will be the guy that presses him the quickest? Is it is it the obvious in like Christian Pulisic or could it be Giovanni Reina or even, I mean, Sid and I have been bigging up Jonathan David, who seems like he might be on the verge of a decent sized move from his club in Belgium. Uh, you guys got to say it again, because we get these Amber alerts now because of the, cur- the, the curfew. And it literally just came while you were, while you were uh, asking me the question. So just <laughs> so repeat was, the question. I think I got yeah, the no problem. It, but I, want, I just want to make sure. We do we have to get the answer basements. in? Do we, <laughs> Sorry, Timmy, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we are working from our basements in a global pandemic, so we understand that <laughs> that curfews are happening. There is This is a weird 2020. I, I was just going to say... Have, uh, it, go ahead, Sid. I, uh, I was going to ask, uh, or do we have to get the interview done by a specific time here based on your curfew, Alexi? Like, what are, <laughs> are we good? No, it's. I mean, look, look I, I am in Los Angeles. There are parts of, the, of Los Angeles right now that had a curfew at one o'clock. So three hours ago, basically, you wow. had to be, uh, or two and a half hours ago, you had to be in your house. Wow. I am in a place where it's a little bit more, but everybody's got a curfew right now. And so this is, you know, this is the world that we're living in. I didn't know that it was 1 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific. That's crazy. Yeah, for, um, you know, places like Beverly Hills and for Santa Monica, which we've seen where, you know, with that. And a rough couple of nights, yeah. So it's unfortunate, but it's the deal. Yeah. Um, Alexi Lawless joining us here. So here's the question that I was asking. I was saying, if in fact you have uh, Alfonso Davies as a top player in CONCACAF, who, who do you think will press him the quickest? Is it the easier question or the easier answer in Christian Pulisic? Or is it Giovanni Reina? Or could it be a guy that Sid and I have been talking about for a while now who seems like he's on the verge of a, of a big money move in Jonathan David? Are, are any of those the names that you think will push him? Or is there someone that I'm leaving out here? No, I mean, look, I think that when you're talking about, you know, CONCACAF, um, you know, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about uh, uh, Christian Pulisic, number one, because, uh, you know, I just think that he has the talent if he stays healthy. And that is such a big if now, guys, because he's shown that he is 
he, he can't stay healthy. If he stays healthy, I think he has the opportunity to be not just uh, you know better than uh, Alfonso Davies, but I think the best American player ever to play the game. And that is such a big if right now. So if, if anybody's going to push him, I think it's going to be Alfonso, uh, Alfonso Davies because of uh, it's going to be Christian Pulisic because I think he just brings a skill set that uh, is exciting, that people want, that is encouraging, that is attacking. You're always going to benefit from attacking type of players. They're always going to be much more flashy, which makes what Alfonso Davies is doing that much more impressive. Because uh, what has really been interesting to me to see the uh, reverence and the appreciation that people have, not just for his ability to go forward, but also his ability to defend. And I know a lot of people say, yeah, but he's caught out of position. The reason that he is quote unquote out of position. And then he, I don't, I don't even, I would, if I even, I'll let you have that, but I wouldn't even say he's out of position. The way that he is playing and is told to play puts him quote unquote out of position. And yet he has the ability and the speed, obviously, but it's not, it's not all. He's already at 19, already starting to harness that speed. So, look, Christian Pulisic better get in gear and better get healthy and have a sustained type of impact. If he does, if he is. Did we lose Alexei Lalas? No, not on his birthday. Not oh, on his birthday. No, he was on a run. He, get another, he, was, such, he was on a heater. You get another oh, alert no. for the curfew. You know what? Phone, phone curfew. All phones shut off. <laughs> That's unfortunate. We're try we'll and reestablish quickly. Yeah. So we're going to try and call him back. If we can't, we will move on. But I do believe we have to say goodbye to the man on his 50th birthday. That's too bad. That's too bad. I hope he brings the beard back. For people who don't know exactly what we're talking about, it is one of the great pieces of facial hair of USA 94. And always, oh, Alexa, you there? Sorry, guys. I mean, once again, it's uh, it's these these alerts that we get, uh, and you know they're vital and they're important in these times. And you know, so we're we're getting alerts well, about stuff that it's, uh, that's going on. So we just didn't want to lose you on your fiftieth birthday. It would have been offside. No, no, I appreciate. It. Let me just let me just finish it off about Alfonso Davies, though. What what? And I, I don't know where I got cut off, but I just wanted to make the point that what has impressed me uh, about the assessment of Alfonso Davies is the way that people have appreciated and the reverence in which they look at his defending, even though one of the knocks on him is that he's out of position. I don't think he's out of position. That's just the way that he plays the game. We know his speed. He's starting to harness that speed. Uh, so I think he is, he is, he is as much respected now for his ability to go forward as a defender as he in, as he is in his ability to defend. Uh, Alexa, before we let you go, cause I'm, I'm, we're soccer heads and, Everything I've read about what the next 18 months is going to look like in soccer is, well, if you're looking for $100 million transfers, you better, you better not hold your breath. The economics have changed. The borders have changed. With that said, however, I've been, I've been really interested in how the English press has reacted to Alfonso Davies. Do you think he is the exception to this? Like, Do you think this little stretch where the entire world is watching German soccer and watching this 19-year-old kid who's playing an unfamiliar position is running down Erling Holland. Do you think he's the guy whose value is going up, and you could see one day Man U breaking the left-back transfer record? Like, is, Do you see that scenario playing out here? Yeah, I mean, you, you like to think that you know some of these big clubs in England or anywhere else obviously have an idea of what's going on in other leagues. You'd like to think. It's not always the case. But certainly, I think Alfonso Davies, maybe more so than anybody has benefited from the fact that the Bundesliga was the first, came back online, and was the focus of everybody's attention. And for those that know him, you know, knew, what, knew what was going on. But a lot of people didn't, and a lot of press, uh, that, whose job is not necessarily to cover day in and day out what's going on in the Bundesliga. And I think the world got exposed to what this guy is. So his value has just in, uh, increased. He's already coming from Bayern Munich, so there's going to be a value associated. But, I, I mean... I'm trying to think of what would make sense for him in terms of a move uh, where he is. He's playing. He's playing in Champions League. He's a starter. It's not even a question how good he is. So where is that next type of step for him? I don't know. But I'll tell you what. It doesn't matter what the market is. Uh, when you've got a young 19-year-old player who is playing consistently on, at that type of level uh, and doing that in, and turning heads all over the world, the sky is the limit for what he can do. I hope that he, too, stays healthy. Even though he's not an American, uh, he's still one of us when it comes to Major League Soccer. We're incredibly proud of 
where he has come from, how far he has come in such a short period of time. And look, it doesn't matter where you're from. You can appreciate a great player. And like I said, this is a great player. Uh, Alexi, once again, uh, happy 50th birthday. And uh, we hope that the next time we get a chance to talk to you, uh, the world is one in a way better place. And two, there's some MLS soccer to talk about. Thank you for doing this. It will. It will. Thank you, guys. I believe in people. All right. Take care, Alexi. Take care, man. Lawless.